a man out walking in some woods, frequented by dog walkers and gay lovers, makes a horrific discovery. It was the mutilated body of a young teenage girl. This is the story of the horrific murder of 15-year-old Hannah de Turville. Hannah de Turville, born on the 31st of October 1982, lived on 6th Avenue, Harrow Road, in Queen's Park, West London, with her mother, June de Turville, and her two younger siblings, 11-year-old Kieran and 4-year-old Anya. She attended Thomas More Catholic School, where she was studying for her GCSEs. Hannah was described as a fun-loving, bubbly girl who got on with everyone and made friends easily. She was said to love drama classes and athletics. Hannah was described as having short cut hair which she wore slicked down with the centre parting. Hannah's mother, June de Turville, was also well known in the community as she was the director of Yar Asantu Community Centre and she was also the organiser for the floats at Notting Hill Carnival. Two days into the new year, on January the 2nd, 1998, Hannah left home to go to the shop for her mother to buy some gold thread at local shop Applebee's on Harrow Road. Hannah was on a first name basis with many of the shopkeepers on Harrow Road due to being so popular. Whilst on the way to the shop, the shopkeeper heard Hannah having a heated argument outside the shop. The shopkeeper knew Hannah and so when Hannah came into the shop, the shopkeeper asked her whether that was her she heard having an argument outside, to which Hannah replied, Yes, the guy's mad. She asked Hannah what she was arguing about, and Hannah replied and said, No, nothing. The concerned shopkeeper asked Hannah if she wanted her to call her a taxi after she had brought her stuff, and even offered to pay for the taxi, but Hannah refused the offer saying she'd be all right, then left. The shopkeeper did not see who Hannah was having the argument with. Hannah arrived back home, but then left home again at approximately 7pm, telling her mum that she was going to see a friend. Hannah was wearing orange jeans, a grey bomber jacket and red Reebok trainers. She told her mother she'd be back later but Hannah would never be seen alive again. When Hannah didn't arrive home that night, her mother alerted the police. But her mother June claims that the police did not take it seriously and unable to just sit around doing nothing. June, along with family and friends, decided to put up missing posters around London and contacted the media. It would be two weeks before the police decided to actually do anything by announcing that Hannah was classed as vulnerable. And then June did not hear from the police again for another week, which was when they had finally decided to visit Hannah's mother at her home. At approximately 4pm on Friday the 23rd of January 1998, three weeks after Hannah had gone missing, a call came in to the London Gay and Lesbian Switchboard. The caller claimed that he had found the body of a young girl hidden in a forest near a golf course on Horston Hill. He then gave directions on where the body could be located and ended the call without identifying who he was. The call handler at the Gay and Lesbian Switchboard immediately called the police to pass on the information and the police came out with sniffer dogs and a helicopter. And following the directions, police found the body of 15-year-old Hannah de Turville. Hannah had been found stabbed to death in what police described as a frenzied attack. She had 20 stab wounds to the face and neck, with the stab wounds to her face 
so frenzied her face had been mutilated and disfigured beyond recognition that even her mother couldn't identify her by her face and dental records had to be used to confirm her identification. A post-mortem revealed that Hannah was probably killed from the first stab wound but the killer continued on stabbing in a frenzied attack even after she was clearly dead. The killer was described as someone with psychopathic tendencies. Hannah had not been sexually assaulted and she hadn't been robbed either. She was also still wearing the clothes she wore the last time her mother saw her and she still had on all her jewellery. So police were baffled as to what the motive for her murder was. Just a week later, Hannah was supposed to be confirmed at her Catholic church. But that would never happen now. Horsenden Hill, where Hannah's body was found, was said to be a popular dog walking spot in the day and a popular gay cruising spot at night, which is why police believed the anonymous caller called a gay switchboard to report her body. It was determined that Hannah had been killed within 12 hours of going missing, but the body had been kept for several days at an undetermined location and then carried to where she was found. Hannah's ankles had been tied together with string and her body wrapped in bin bags that the killer had attempted to tape to her body. Hannah, who was 5 foot 2 and weighed 10 stone, so police said that it would have took at least two people to carry the body to the location it was found at. Superintendent David Nicol, who headed the inquiry, which was labelled Operation Maidstone, expressed frustration at the lack of information, saying, we just cannot find a damn motive for a murder at all. Police profilers believe that the killer was likely to be someone Hannah knew, who lived in the West London area of Halsden or Paddington and was familiar with the Harrow area. And due to the frenzy and ferocity of the attack, it appeared to be by someone who was angry with Hannah. The killer would have been heavily bloodstained and acting strangely. The killer would have likely had access to a vehicle and was also likely to have shown displays of anger in the past. Hannah's family described her as streetwise and said she would not have gotten into the car of somebody she didn't know and she would have fought hard to avoid an abduction. Halsden Hill, where the body was found, was just over seven miles away and a 30 minute or so drive. Nine months after the murder, there were five arrests made in connection to the murder, but no evidence was found to charge anybody. Hannah's school raised money to pay for her funeral and set up a plaque in her memory, and a £10,000 reward was set up for any information leading to an arrest. Hannah's mother, June de Turville, made an emotional plea to catch her daughter's murderer. She broke down in tears, saying, She was my angel. My Hannah is in heaven now, and her soul will be at peace. No one can hurt her anymore. You don't expect your child to go before you, and I don't want any mother or parent to suffer what I am going through. All I want is for the person who killed my Hannah to be caught and brought to justice. Hannah was a unique person who cannot be replaced. She always had a smile on her face and plenty to live for. Every clue will lead the police closer to catching this animal. On Friday the 24th of April 1998, the funeral of 15-year-old Hannah was held at Our Lady of Souls Church on Bosworth Road, Kensal Newtown, West London. More than 900 mourners turned up to say their last goodbyes, with 150 people standing outside in the street, due to the church being packed out. Hannah's family was said to be in turmoil and going through deep grief at her loss. If you have any information at all, no matter how big or seemingly insignificant, please put the family at ease and call the incident room on 0181 358 1871 or call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 
0800 triple five triple one. You can also give information online, also anonymously, at www.crimestoppers.uk.org. In February 2022, Hannah's mother, June de Terville, sadly passed away, having never seen her daughter's killer brought to justice. <laughs>